ladies and gentlemen, join now a uh, member of one fine establishment. They are a legendary band in my eyes. It is Mr. Saul Davis of James. How are you doing? Very, very well. It's very, uh, very nice to be sat down talking to you and really uh, excited at times as well with a brand new album about to drop not too long now uh, and a very... Very surprising album from what I've listened to. Uh, how how great these songs actually hold up, and how it's got the the resonance of the '90s sound, in my opinion. Would I be right by saying that you've gone old school and back to the roots of James? I don't know. That's quite an interesting um, observation. It, 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 it's one I've made myself a little bit, to some extent. Mm. I think one or two places you might be right. Yeah. Um, I think. I mean, there's quite a lot of new and adventurous stuff going on in it sonically mm-hmm. but i do know what we're talking about um i think there's a couple of songs in particular which remind me of things which maybe could have been on a kind of later 90s record pleased to meet you for example yeah um which is a favorite record of mine actually that we made um and um yeah i know i know what you mean it, 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 if it's if that is the case it wasn't certainly designed to be like that it's just something that's kind of happened um but um, yeah, you might be right. I think um, there's an ethos maybe within the songwriting rather than the way that it actually sounds, which is perhaps reminiscent of that period. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and we've made quite a direct record, I would say, although there are a couple of songs on it that are also very um, journey songs. Yes. I think that's been quite charitable. Other people would call them meandering. But uh-huh. anyway, whatever. Um <laughs> <laughs> and um but yeah there's something um in in that i think um no, we, we always go into the studio well we always go into the writing process first off um looking to um just you know, we don't have an agenda we don't really know what we're going to do we just make some music right and um and and so where it ends up is is anybody's guess really uh oftentimes uh, so um, yeah, if you think it's got that flavour, then then it clearly has. You know, I I, I, yeah, I suppose <laughs> it's yeah. it really has. And like you said, it's got some of that new style uh, sound in it as well, especially with the drum. I'm not going to give too much away because I want people to dig this out and find out themselves because it's a great record from what I've listened to, uh, and it's got a bit of right. everything in there. And you've just mentioned you got a few songs here, what you call follow, you know, I call them story songs where you can just sit and get lost in the song in the moment. These songs, what are pending for this album? Are, are these things that have been knocking about a while or is it something that you and the rest of the band have got together and actually sat down and thought, right, this is what we need to be doing. Let's do it. No, it's more like that, really. We we just, there's four of us get together wherever it might be in different places, if it's country or wherever, sometimes even abroad, if we find ourselves with a window somewhere if we're off doing a show or so mm. whatever, and we just get together and we just we just jam together and then we record everything. And then over a period of time, months, you know, whatever that might be, we, we've we got a big body of, of these jams and then we start digging into them and start making them into little listenable things. And then, mm. you know, then it's down to Tim to come up with stuff. Um uh that makes sense right so so we we we're, it, that's the process yeah um it's a bit haphazard and it's not very uh efficient in a in a sense because we do a lot more work than people will ever see yeah um although the bonus album the bonus version of this um or the deluxe version like call it of this record has uh 10 uh unfinished demos on it which is our attempt we were quite interested in, in, and we thought it was very useful to show our kind of fan, our super fans, anyway. Yeah. How, that process, right? So we put we put, we put the, the, the um, deluxe version of this record has ten but, uh, songs, which will be regarded. I mean, might be, they're a bit messy, right? And the, the words aren't formed and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But there, there's some tunes in there. But if we'd worked more on those songs, they would have ended up on the record, right? Uh huh. Um, but um, we thought rather than just throwing all of the extant material away. On, on leaving it on the cutting room floor, we'd actually show people that, right? So it's quite, that's all quite interesting. I'll be interested to see what you think about some of that stuff because there's some real nuggets in there. I think as well that captures the flavour of the songs and the process of them songs. And you never guess, I guess, that these songs could actually be plucked away, finished off in ways, and maybe created something for later on in the future. Is that something what you guys think about with these uh, little clippets, you know, just dragging them and maybe adding to them for future projects? Um, we never really go back to anything. This is the first wow. time, really, um, that we've ever done that, where we've gone, oh, look, 
these things are still there. They sound quite cool. Let's bang them out. Wow. I mean, we got close to that with our second album that we did with Eno Wawa, Wa, which we recorded at the same time as Lay, the album, mm-hmm. in the early 90s. Um, but that was very deliberately a kind of statement from us. Uh-huh. Um, but um, that's not for everybody, that record. As in, it's not, you know, it's not commercial record at all. But I think the good thing about hearing some of these little demos, anybody who takes the time and the trouble to go and listen to that stuff when it appears on Spotify will hear, yeah, well, they'll go, oh, yeah, I can see where this would have gone. Uh-huh. Right? So, you know, I can see how this would be finished off or whatever, you know. And, uh, and I think if we go to the trouble of making 80, 90, 100 bits and pieces and then people only ever hear 10, 11, 12 from it, it it's a bit daft, really. Yeah. But yeah. this is an attempt to give people the opportunity to hear a little bit more and stuff. But it's a bit of a magical process. Whilst I say it's not very efficient, it's not. I just spend a lot of time doing this, and then there's a relatively small amount of stuff that comes out at the end, right? Yeah. But um, nevertheless, it's a magical process, and not many bands work like this, right? Mm. Uh, normally, it might be somebody sat with an acoustic guitar around a piano and, and construct songs more. But we've always pretty much jammed our songs in this way. So it's, it's a different kind of way of doing it. It yeah. hasn't harmed us. I mean, last year we won uh, the Icon Award at the Ivan Novellas, you know, so mm. we're, we're, not, we're doing something right. I was just going to say, it's not harmed you at all. Going from the career that you've had so far with the band and the hits and those songs that when you dig deeper, in my opinion, are hits as well, even though they're not commercialised on airplay. You know, when you dig deep to songs, you've got your big songs, you know, your sevens, Born of Frustration. But when you listen to songs like Ring the Bell and Laid, uh, She's a Star, you've got big hits, Mixtured, you are a band that just seems to come back and back and back and back. You know, I'm not going to be blowing too much smoke here, but it's a fact that James are a band what have been around and know the stuff and a band what have been, I don't know, I don't, just, just, become that word legendary because of the songs you've got but also because of your performances as well live uh, and for some reason the the fan base of james is just so loyal and huge did you still expect this to be happening right now no 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 absolutely not but we've never really done anything by design or by you know what i mean like we never really had a plan yeah uh and so we could never have planned for anything. I just think we would all have probably individually and perhaps collectively the idea that, you know, there would be a, much sooner than now we would have hit the point where we either dried up creatively. You know, things have shelf lives, don't they? Of course. Right? And, um, you know, but the good thing about being in a band, as opposed to being a footballer or something, do you know what I mean? Like, you, I mean, you know, when you get to 30, if you're lucky enough to have a career as football and you get to 35, you get 40, you're done, aren't you? Yeah. Absolutely done. No chance. It's just not going to work for you, regardless of how brilliant you might have been. Mm. Of course, that's not the case for musicians and people who work in theatre and movies and stuff. And tell, you know what I mean? Like those creative industries, mm-hmm. you can keep going. And I think our culture is becoming more and more open to the idea that people can be older as well. And I think that's quite good. But we've got a lot to teach. You know, we've still got boys. Yes. Um, and, and, and our generation... We, 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 older people, and there's two people joining our band now, Chloe and Debbie, who are, Chloe's just, um, uh, Debbie rather is just 13, and Chloe's into her mid, um, mid to late 30s, I'd say. Yeah. But they're all a lot younger than the rest of us, but they, they bring a bit of freshness and, and, um, from an age perspective, not as also being women as well, rather than mm-hmm. the rest of us being women, but, but, um, and that, that's helped to keep us fresh, I think, some of them, but, but I think we're naturally optimistic people anyway. Yeah. And um and we love what we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah? And um so and because we've never really had a master plan, it means we can't really fail. Because yeah? we've got nothing to judge ourselves against. We can only judge ourselves against ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. And um and I, I, and that's why I said I think I think we're doing all right. I mean, we're we're forty two years about now in reality, right? Yeah. This is our eighteenth album. And that was pretty mental, isn't it, really? And we're doing these arena yeah. tours, and we're doing all of this stuff, and it, you know, we just got playlists across local BBC radio, so um, this new track, Our World, is going to be heard by people sat in their cars and all that, that yeah. stuff. And, um, you know, it, 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 you know it, it, it's quite an interesting time, really, for us. And, and um, yeah, I, I think a few years ago, it, it was it was very difficult to be older for anybody younger to take you seriously and I think yeah. that has been a little bit of a challenge there. I think it has changed slightly. It's it's really, really infectious how 
the band is with people. And and from an onlooker's point of view, if you stand outside the uh, the, the the circle and watch you guys perform, you're on about how you've you're you're older, but how great and tight you guys are on the road and on this record but being live how tim's voice holds up still is incredible and it's still obvious that you're getting lost in the music tim has just got this magical dance all the time he's got a great voice you guys just seem to be lost in your own moments and i just think there's not really many bands what can really touch that right now and haven't been for many years. And with this new album, would you say that this is an album that you are ready to just throw out there for these new, uh, these new tours what are coming up uh, later on this year? Is it something that you're just going to plug up on this album or visit little bits and bobs through your set? It's because blooming heck, 18, there's a lot of albums, so, you know, and everything else what's gone with it with the years. How the hell do you pick a set list for this? Very, I mean, I think you know, we've got some long, you know, it's really difficult, and it's a really good question because, um, first of all, uh, you know, and I, and I want to say thanks to you, you know, you said some very nice well, I appreciate about it. Our band, you know, I really, I think that's really great. No, it's very gracious of you to do so. I, I really get that you mean it, you know, it's 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 you know, it's, it's how I feel, it. I think that's really uh, great to hear. Mm. I would say, um, yeah, li- live. I think is where we come to life. I think we made a very good record and we have made some very good records, but life is live is where we do come to life. Mm. Um, you're right about Tim. I don't think, I mean, I think we'll hang off our boots when Tim can no longer deliver. Yes. Right? Uh, and I think, I mean, I was, I was just saying to someone earlier that, you know, for me to stand on the stage right next to Tim in, in the stage, we've just done two very big shows in Mexico, for example, last week, and we were on fire. It was the first chance we had to play some of these new songs live to people, and we went down so well. And it was oh, insane, really. Yeah. Just, what what we were always going to, like, to be on stage together and bring them to some life, right? And um, and I think that's how we see it, really. It's, it's a privilege for us to work with each other. I think we recognize each other's strengths. We've been through, dragged backwards through all sorts of crap over the years, you know what I mean? And we've made it through everything. And, and um, so, I think that puts us in good, good stead with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's really important. You know, there's a really good people like again talking about football. You know, people often talk about it's the attitude in the dressing room that will, that will be the deciding factor in who you know who succeeds ultimately yeah. and who doesn't. Right? You know, and I think we've got that in space in our in our camp. We're we're a very together bunch. We're not always being, but we we are. Yeah. At the moment, I don't see it going away. Um. In terms of our set, I mean, it's it. We we have to go out. We know why people are coming to see us yeah. in this arena. What we're doing. People, some people are coming just to see a bunch of hits and we'll get those songs. A lot of, but a lot of hardcore fans are coming to hear the new record. So we have to also do that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then there's hidden, I mean, there's hidden gems, you know. So that's why our shows are usually about two hours fifteen. Yeah. Because we recommend people are coming, you know, they're spending a lot of money to come and see us. Yeah. And we've got to do a Belgium show, right? And we've got to give everything, we've got to give a bit of everything to everybody. So it's almost an impossible job, but we, we have to give it a shot. We've got, you know, Razor Light are opening up for us on this tour, and they're fantastic. And I thought that's 45 minutes of a real blast of up, kind of, you know, that will get everybody right. Yeah. Wound up and really cool. It's a great um, combination of bands, in my opinion. Yeah. And, um, I think, um, yeah, it's not easy to put a set list together. We, we've got to be brave when we do it, and we always are, you know. And um, especially when you get into the very big venues, you think, oh, should we play less new songs of the album? And you go, well, mm. hang on a minute. You know, we're releasing it on, on April the 12th. By the time we get into these arenas into June, mid-June, everybody who wants to have heard it will have heard it, right? So yeah, there right. will be some familiarity with the song. So they're not straight off the bat brand new tunes and no one's heard there will be some familiarity which is really good uh-huh. people already have band favourites yeah you know and, um, and people will be as always shouting out for tunes of the new record but there's always people shouting out for mad mental b-sides from 1982 that we don't know how to play anymore yeah, as well right yeah, so yeah. you've just got to manage all of those expectations it's very difficult to do yeah but we, again I think we get it right really to some extent or other because I, ne- I never see glum faces leaving an arena, right? No. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, but what we've not done and what we will never do and what we must not do, I mean, unless we deliberately can't do it for a particular reason, which would be, oh, let's, and we've done it once in our career, 
is where we just go and play all the hit records by mm-hmm. together in one set. Yeah. Um, it would be interesting to do that just to see what the vibe is. We actually did years ago in, in, in Edinburgh for a very specific reason because we were redoing the set list from a late 90s gig that we did at Powerlands and it was kind of a rework of that gig. So we just yeah. played exactly the same song. And at that point, we were supporting the Greatest Hits album, so we just played all the Greatest Hits, right? So that's how mm-hmm. we did it. Um, I, I would like to at some point just go out and play like, bang, you know, here's 20 belters that everybody knows. Yes. But um, we, we've never done that really and um and i don't think we should yet at all um i think it would be the death of us i think it's the death of a lot of bands oh. they feel compelled to go and play the songs that everybody knows and i think yeah. that's a big mistake you have to lose people wanting a little bit more as well you absolutely know? but at the same time but at the same time we're not stupid we know that people want to hear sit down it means a lot to them right yeah we know that people are growing up with that song and we know that it's it's not just that they like it it might be that it's really important to some people right in their own lives and as we get older, we become more adept to understanding that, that that connection. You know, we we have people come up to us who've got lyrics tattooed on them. Yeah. Right. Um, that's important, right, to people. So our job is to honour that importance and make sure that they they feel that we hear them, right? Mm-hmm. So getting that right is really, really hard. We need to do what the cure do. Just play for three and a half hours, but Tim would be dead. Yeah, he's, be dead. he's a showman as well. And People that have never seen the band before, this is where I'm going to go left field, and they want to know what music's about. And I say it again, you go and watch James because you've got a feel-good factor. You've got songs what you get lost in. You've got songs what can make you cry, but then you've got this energetic band will get lost in the moment and you just can't take your heart, eyes off the band and Tim. And to me, what you get is everything that you pay for with this band. you know. And I think that is a quality, once again, that not many bands get. And in my opinion, if they don't know who James are by now, they could probably will know who James is if you mention certain songs like you've mentioned. Go and dig deeper and look at them hidden gems. And I think it's fantastic. This album... You know, I think it is really, really up there, and I can't wait to see the response. I've got feelings this album will be, you know, quite a, a, a good response album, and a, probably a little bit better than a good response. I think it's absolutely fantastic, and I can't wait to see what happens live and how you mix it up. Just, a, just a quick one: Do you are you perfectionists on the road? Are you a band that needs to be perfect, or do you not care if it's loose? What is it? Because you know, I, I, I don't understand my bands how they go about this anymore. We need to be loose. So we're, yeah. we're very, we are perfectionists, uh-huh. right? as in we, we, certain stuff that needs to happen. So we feel like we can do what we've got to get up yes. there. And, do, and that goes back to what you've just been saying about giving people everything we've got, right? Because we are going to touch on a lot of different emotions. Mm-hmm. And we are going to talk, we are going to have a conversation in a way. I it sounds a bit artificial, but we are going to have a conversation with our audience, right? We're up there for two hours, two hours, 15, right? And we are going to go through a whole gamut of different emotions. You know, music is, an emo- is a vehicle for different emotions, isn't it? Music's the one thing you can do. Football does it as well. But music can make you sad. It can make you cry and scream and be happy. It can, uh-huh. you know, it can, it, 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 you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's there with you in your most intimate moments and it's there with you in the biggest celebration moments that are collective, right? You know what I mean? So, yeah. for me, music is a high point, one of the high points of what human being can do and create, right? And we, create a lot of it in the moment so a james show is never the same twice um and but but to do that and to do it well and to do it so that people go no i want to go back and see more of that and to give people that value that we know we need to give people right yeah um that certain things need to work with so yeah. once we've got that working we can go anywhere and we can do anything we want you know, and um, and that means taking liberties with some of the songs. We can elongate sections. We can speed stuff up. We can do whatever. We can go stop this. This is shite. Let's do another thing. All right, fair enough. Um, you know I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that that it, you've alluded to it there a couple of times. There are no bands that I know out there at the moment who do that anymore. It was a lot more common, you know. And there were some great bands that lots of people know about who were much more. That's how that's going on stage meant to them, you know. Um, but but that's that's been beaten out of most of us, you know. <laughs> uh, the machine of the the, it, it, the industry and all yes. that it demands that we don't do that, and every show needs to be exactly the same. And that's uh-huh. because the shows are, are developed in a certain way; they're very technological now. Everybody yeah. wants to go and see the dancing and the stuff and all that. So it has to be clock. Right? It has to work like clockwork. Every single night needs to be the same because that's how it works, right? Yeah. Oh, it's like going to the back end or something. You're going to see a performance. With us, it's very different. 
you know, and you, you will have seen, it sounds like you've seen several of these bar shows and you'll, you'll see how they sway and, you know, we're, 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 we're not like that. But, yeah. but we have perfectionists in the sense that we need it to work, right? Whatever that means, even if there's a mess up or there's a, there's a problem, it, 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 as long as we can get out of it, then the tours, that's a good yeah. thing to perform, you know. Mm. I, again, I talk about football and this respect, football like that, right? With all the best training and, 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 planning and yeah. analysis and all the rest of it. Yeah. The best man football manager in the world, let's say that's, you know, um Brendan Rogers at Celtic. Yeah. Right? It's not let's just imagine it was uh-huh. right? <laughs> so, be sensible. It's all the other we've got athletes in barbers and everything that we do he knows of a shot coming someday. No, they certainly don't. And then you know, and so you see and I see, I see us a bit like that. We yeah. do a lot of really good prep, but we on the day we don't quite know what's going to happen, and it's magical that. Yeah, and that's where the spark comes from, and that's why people walk out with John's Cape with massive wounds on their faces. No, it's great. It's a great way to 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 end it. It really is, and. Again, Yummy, what a great album it is. I've listened to it and I've had it on a few times. I can't wait to see the reaction. I just appreciate you sitting down, Sol, and talking about this and opening up about it all. No, no, it's been a really nice chat. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm in the middle today of talking to quite a lot of people about this record. And, um, and actually, what I'm, what I'm finding is um, um, I'm quite adept at knowing when people are telling me the truth. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and uh, so when the glass guy told me it was shite, I really understood that he meant it. No, it was a joke. He didn't. No, but what I'm feeling is quite a lot of, um, a, a very, uh, a lot of love for this record. And actually, um, like you have as well. And again, I want to thank you for that. A lot of love for the band, actually. And then um, maybe you were just entering a period where the band is, is viewed just, just in, you know, because we've been around long enough. I mean, that's a good thing or it's a bad thing, right? 42 yeah. years in this business is hardcore. That, you know, that's chews and spits out most people, right? They they mm-hmm. long go to and just go, no, I'm done with that. Um, we haven't obviously done that. This uh, touched on this, our 18th record. This is will not be our last record either. So, you know, we're talking already about doing some more writing sessions for the next one, right? No, I love so, it. You know, it, it's... Um, yeah, but well, you've said some very interesting things uh, from almost from a fan perspective, um, let's say, yeah. to an extent. Um, you've given me a very good uh, vision of what it might be like. Uh, some of the things that we would like to think we had within our armory, mm-hmm. um, you've touched upon, uh, and that's very good. You know, it's good to know. We're doing a good job, I think. Uh, it was very absolutely. nice to hear you say that. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. Some great tunes on there. Uh, hit them on the live show. It is Mr. Saul Davis of the legendary band James. 